so far. Yes. I'm so glad you're here. Welcome to Chemistry Colleen's workshop. Let me get my apron on and we'll get started with some fun chemistry today. Oh, do you see what I see? Guess what we're going to make today? I cannot wait. You're going to love this one. We're going to make a rainbow salad. Yeah. They're so delicious. It's one of my favorites and something so easy to make at home. All right, but I need your help with the colors of the rainbow. So let's start from the beginning. Hmm. What is the first color of the rainbow? Red. Okay, okay, okay. Great, great, great. Red. So do I have anything that's red for our salad? Strawberries. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, strawberries. So when we make our rainbow salad, we actually make it look like a rainbow because you eat with your eyes as much as you eat with your tummy and your mouth too. So let's put the start of our arch of our rainbow right here. Ah, delicious strawberries. Nice and red. Okay. Now, I'm going to go with my memory of a rainbow. So it's red and then yellow, right? Right. Okay, so I'm going to do yellow. And this is mango. You could also use yellow peppers if you want it. If you want just a little spicy, you could use yellow peppers or yellow squash is good too. But I found these mangoes and I thought they would look really good and taste really good with these strawberries next to it. Okay, so now after yellow comes... Green! Yes, green, green, green. Okay, uh, what do I have? Yeah, green beans. These snap peas are so good. Actually, not green beans, snap peas. When I was growing up, we had these in my garden, and I used to love to snap them and just eat them right from the garden. They were so good. And look what a nice little arch they make holding all the rest of the rainbow salad in. So we have green and then blue. Blueberries. Yeah, blueberries. Yep, we're going to use blueberries. Okay. These are a little roly poly, so they get a little bit. Whoop, there we go. <laughs> but we have a way to hold them in, in a rainbow salad. So we'll just get that going. Ah, oh, this looks so good. Oops. Okay. So green, blue. Purple. Purple. Yeah, this gives our salad a bit of a more crunch like a salad has. And we're going to use purple cabbage. Purple cabbage comes in a big, big cabbage that you can chop up or your parents or your family or an adult can chop up for you. Okay. And you can put a lot of purple cabbage in this. I'm just going to put enough to hold those blueberries from rolling around. Oh, I love my rainbow salad. I've got all the colors, right? Not all of them. Oh. I don't? What color am I missing? Orange. Hmm, you're right. I am missing orange. It goes red, orange. Whew. Oh, since I don't have any orange here, I have an idea. I have a great idea for orange. I know just what I can use. I have this. This is orange, right? No, it's not. It's not? Oh, but I bet it is. Spinach has orange on the inside of it. Yeah, you can find orange molecules in the inside of spinach. And they're called beta carotenes. Beta carotene. Yeah. So, what word did you hear in there that sounds like orange? Carrot. Yeah, it's the same molecule that's in carrots. So, carotene is found in carrots, but also in spinach. And we have an experiment to see 
what's inside the spinach to see the beta carotenes. And we have two ways to do it. We have one kind of fancier way that we can do in a kind of a laboratory. And then we have one way that we can do at home or anywhere in your RV, in a treehouse, we can do it anywhere. Okay, so hang on a minute and we'll look at both ways of seeing the orange that's actually in spinach and then we can finish our rainbow salad. Welcome back to my workshop. Now we're going to look inside spinach to find the beta carotene. How are we gonna do that? Well, the first thing we need is some delicious fresh spinach leaves. And we're going to take about three to four cups of spinach, fresh spinach leaves, and put them in a blender. And you're going to add about a half a cup to a cup of acetone, which is otherwise known as fingernail polish remover. Now remember, it is fingernail polish remover in your blender. So it was fine in my blender, but if you're not feeling so great about that, you can also use water, but just use a, a tiny amount of water. And you're gonna put it in your blender and really, 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 really blend it. And it's gonna come out looking a lot like this. So this is the liquid, this is the chopped up spinach. And it, do you see that top green layer at the top? That's where the good stuff is. That's where the beta carotenes are. So it's almost gonna look like a green smoothie. If you blend it up, it's gonna look like a green smoothie, but don't drink it, especially if you used acetone, don't drink it. But it will look like a green smoothie. And then the next thing I do is I take this top, top green layer out and I use one of these guys, this is called a pipette, and I squeeze it and put it in just a jar, okay? So I put all of that in a jar and then I let the acetone or water evaporate and you get this little dark green residue and that's where all the beta carotene is. And I know that it's still green, but you'll see in a minute that we can find the beta carotene in this dark green smudge on the bottom. Okay, so we're gonna use something called a column and it looks like a column, right? And a column allows molecules that are stickier to stay on the top. So they're like stuck on the top of the column. And the ones that are less sticky slide down the column first. And beta carotene is not very sticky. So when we put it on the column, you'll see the orange band, which is the orange beta carotene, coming down first. And the green molecules that are called chlorophyll will be stuck at the top. So chlorophyll is sticky and beta carotene is slippery or slipperier. Okay, so let's get started. So I'm going to take some of our solvent, okay, which is the acetone, and put just a tiny bit in there. I don't wanna put very much because I want this to be as dark as possible. Okay, so another word for that is concentrated. We want it to be really concentrated. Okay, so I'm just gonna put a tiny bit there. Okay, and dissolve it. And then, oops, I forgot a step, friends. Hold on one second, that's okay. The other thing we wanna do is make our column wet. Okay, so to make our column wet, we also drip liquid through it. Okay, inside the column is something called silica gel. And if you have little packets like in your vitamins or um, electronics sometimes, anything that wants to be kept dry, there'll be little pa packets of what's called silica or silica gel. So we have silica gel and we're just getting the column ready. And it's just making sure that it's wet. There's a wad of cotton in the bottom that helps keep it, there it goes. You can see it kind of dripping. I'll turn the cup like this. There's a drop. Okay. Okay, I'm ready to load the column. And again, you want just to put a very, very dark green concentrated amount right here on the top. And then once that has been absorbed onto the column, you want to go back to your solvent and slowly drip that down. 
on top. Do you see the green coming through? Do you see that? You see it moving down? Let me know when you guys see the orange coming through. It might start off as yellow first. Oh, this is so exciting, friends. We can start to see the orange beta carotenes. They look a little yellow right now, but when we concentrate them down, it will be an orange molecule. And you see they're slippier, more slippery, okay, or less sticky than the green chlorophyll molecules that are up there. So our column is working, and we're gonna be able to finish our rainbow salad with our orange beta carotene molecules. This is awesome. Our column is going nice and slow because the separation of these molecules does take a little bit of time. So we just wanna keep putting a little bit of liquid on top just to keep things moving through, but we're almost there. And when the orange yellow liquid starts coming through, we'll start collecting it with a fresh, oops, not that one, with a fresh test tube so that we have it and we can look at it. It's almost there. Scientists do this column chromatography all the time. They use it when they're discovering new medicines. They use it when they're making new materials but they especially use it when they're finding out what's in plants. So if we find a medication from plants, like we found quinine from a uh, quinine um, for malaria, or we can use um, other natural products that make medicines, this is one way that we call isolate them and we can separate them from each other. So you can imagine all the yucky leafy stuff lays at the top and the medicine will come out the bottom. It's super fun to see that. So this is big league science. And at Chemistry Colleen, we do big league science and this is big league science. Okay, if you take a look, friends, we are getting separation. The chlorophyll is staying stuck at the top because it's stickier and our beta carotenes are coming out. And that's a really great result because it's easier to collect them when there's separation between those. So we have a little bit of clear solution or a clear column here, and our molecules are about ready to come through. So I'm gonna get ready with my test tube and get ready to collect these. So here's a very fun chemistry Colleen story. I spent most of my time when I was training to be a chemist doing this. And you can imagine just sitting there, ho hum, ho hum, waiting for the column just to drip through. So many hours. And so you put the music on in the background and you're sitting there going, where's my molecule? Can my molecule please slide down the column because I'm hungry or I want to go home? But you just stick it out and wait. So this is a good example. Sometimes chemistry requires patience. Science requires patience. And you just put some music on and have a good time. There's our beta carotene. It worked. We, if we concentrate this yellow solution down, it's going to be orange. And what is beta carotene? This is beta carotene that is found in what we know as carrots. Yeah, beta carotene's in carrots, but now we know beta carotene is also in spinach. Spinach, yep, it's in a ton of other foods too. Anything that's orange or red probably has beta carotene in it. So things like sweet potatoes, kale um, is like spinach, that's green, but it's also like spinach. And other vegetables that are orange or red probably have beta carotene in them. And why is beta carotene so important? Well, for one thing, your body converts it to vitamin A, and we know vitamin A is great for our eyesight. It's great for a lot of other things too. It's good for our heart health. Beta carotene is good for our skin. And, oh, speaking of skin, have you ever heard of a molecule called retinol or retinal? Both of those come from beta carotene too. So those are natural ways we can get beta carotene for all kinds of great things for our body. So if we go back to our famous 
rainbow salad. I bet you if we use a bed of spinach to put this on and mix this all up, knowing that our orange part of our rainbow is in there, we're going to have a beautiful and delicious rainbow salad. Thank you so much for coming to my workshop, friends, and learning about column chromatography, <laughs> column chromatography, molecules that are sticky, molecules that are slippery, and most important of all, that just because something is green on the outside doesn't mean that it's green on the inside and could have something a little bit orange. Hi friends, now I'm going to show you another way that we can see the beta carotenes in spinach that might be more fun for our younger scientists out there. Okay, let's look to see what we need. It's pretty simple. We need filter paper that's found from coffee filters, so just like this, I use a, one that's a cone, and a pair of scissors, that's it. And we cut this to be a long strip of paper. I'll cut this again, okay, to look like this. And on this long strip of paper, we're going to put Remember our residue from the last one? That's just the ground up spinach that we, we um, gathered. So we're just going to put a drop of that across the bottom of the filter paper, just like loading the column, okay? So just like we did in our last experiment with the spinach, and we're just gonna streak it across the bottom there. And then we can put this, you can make a little hook and hook it on the side of any Tupperware container will work or a bell jar or even a glass from your kitchen will work. We'll put it like that. And then we're going to pour in, this can work with water or it can also work with vinegar. We're gonna pour this in. And let that touch the bottom and it's gonna to start to soak up. Oops, there you go. You can see it soaking up there. Do you see it kind of raising up there? Okay, I'll leave that like that. It looks like eyelashes on the bottom, doesn't it? <laughs> and as the water goes up here, you're gonna to start to see the yellow compounds come out. So you'll see a little bit of that coming out. In a, in a bit. I'm going to pour a little bit more liquid in here. And this is a quick, simple way to do it too. The reason I started with the other one is because the yellow band is something that you can collect. So this is what we collected. So this is actual beta carotene solution in here. And on this one, we can see it, but we can't collect it. So we can kind of see and in this case, our yellow is just coming out in the bottom there. You can kind of see it a little bit. And one way to make this experiment a little more well with a little bit more yellow, do you see the yellow on the bottom, is to make a longer strip of paper. So the longer the strip of paper, the more the molecules, the more space the molecules have to spread out and then you can really see the yellow. But that's that. That's just another way to see beta carotene in spinach that's quick, easy, simple, and great for our younger scientists out there. Goodbye, friends. See you periodically.